Hello AWS friends, in this video I will show you my pipeline I have created to automate CloudFormation deployments. So if you are deploying your infrastructure uh, with CloudFormation, probably you are gonna store these CloudFormation templates in a GitHub repo or some kind of Git, correct? But how do you actually deploy these CloudFormation stacks? So you can of course do this in the web console here in CloudFormation, say create new stack or update an existing stack with new variables, update variables and so on. But this can cause errors because actually you have no control if somebody is deploying a stack here or updating a stack which is not checked in into your Git repo which has not gone through a pull request or a code review. So actually you run here danger that your CloudFormation stacks, which are deployed maybe on QA, on prod, or whatever stage, are not in sync with the CloudFormation stacks you have in your repo and where you have the chance to control and um, uh, control the quality with a pull request and really be aware what you want to deploy in your accounts. You should deploy your CloudFormation stack with a pipeline. So you can do this with many tools, with Bitbucket or with Jenkins. I have implemented a solution that will create code pipelines here in, in AWS for each um, template you have in your Git repo. So let's take a look in my example repo. This is my repo for my CloudFormation files. And for each template I have um, a folder which includes the template, the YAML file for the, t uh, for the CloudFormation and parameter files. How to structure a repo for your CloudFormation files? Please have also a look in my blog you will find some informations on how to actually you could structure your um, templates into layers, for example for networking, for applications, for lambda code, and also kind of number your templates so you have documented the order in which you have to deploy, for example, a new account or a new stage. Now, since you got your repo with all of your CloudFormation stacks, you will need a pipeline for each of these stacks to deploy it. Um, and you don't want to create all of these pipelines manually, right? You could do so, that, but, but that will cause a lot of work. So um, basically you need a source and a deploy stack for the CloudFormation stack. What my tools does is to create these pipelines depending on the structure of the CloudFormation repo fully automatically. So if you have, for example, 60 CloudFormation folders and stacks, it will create here 60 um, pipelines. Once you delete a folder and stack in your repo, the pipeline will also delete the um, um, created pipeline for the stack. So this will always keep up to date to the templates in your repo. Now let's have a look how we set up actually this pipeline generator. So before we install the pipeline generator, it's just a CloudFormation template. Um, you first need to structure your repo for your CloudFormation file um, with some naming conventions. Um, you can see this example repo here. So of course you can um, adapt it, um, for example the prefix I'm using, I'm, I'm using CFN as a prefix. But um, that depends on you. If you do, though, you have to adapt the Python script. But in general, you need a folder for each of your templates. And you need a template file, of course. And you need um, a JSON file for the parameters with this um, format to um, define your parameters for each stack. So now let's set up this pipeline. So um, please have a look in this blog, you will find the link on the video description where you get some more information on how this pipeline works, what it does, why is it designed like this. Um, please have a look in my GitHub account, you will find 
two repos which matter. This one is the pipeline, the CloudFormation template to create uh, the pipeline generator. And this one is an example repo to um, get an idea how your CloudFormation repo should actually look like. I have mentioned this. You need folders for each template and you need, um, of course, a template file and parameter files. So by now we can get started. We will change to the CloudFormation console in your region. I am here in Ireland and we will begin to install the pipeline generator. Actually, we have to do one thing in advance. So we have to set up a CodeStar connection which allows to uh, connect to our GitHub or Bitbucket um, account, whatever you got, what you're using. So to do this, for example, with GitHub, um, you have to set up the AWS connector for GitHub in your GitHub account and allow the repos um, you want to use. And then you have to go here in the developer tools to connection, create a new connection. Um, as mentioned, supported Bitbucket, GitHub and GitLab and set these connection. Once you got this, you will receive an AON for your connection, which we're going to need to um, define a parameter in our template. Now we got the connection and we can install the pipeline generator stack. So this one is from the repo, the first repo, the um, CFN pipeline and this is the repo and here's only one YAML file, the CFN pipeline generator. We have to select this one. Then we can enter a name and you can define a branch name. You have to enter your connection AIN. You have to enter the repository ID of your um, GitHub repo. So this means the repo where your CloudFormation files are. So in this case, this is my name for, for my GitHub account and this is the repo. And that's what I'm entering here. You can define here if you want to trigger the pipeline generator on changes on your um, repo for CloudFormations? I say yes, but if you don't want to this um, start automatically, please set this to false. By the way, the pipelines for your CloudFormation files, um, which we uh, uh, generate with this pipeline generator, are not triggered automatically. This is by purpose, um, because um, actually, I don't want that, for example, my stacks will get automatically deployed to QA or prod. I really want to execute the pipeline um, when I want to schedule this deployment. So I say next. Yes, we will create some rules, so we have to confirm. And by now, my pipeline generator is in progress and we'll start to create the, um, the resources. This will take a while. I will pause the video and I'll be back when this is done. So the stack was deployed successfully, as you can see here. And we got some resources which were created. And let's have a look on here in code pipeline. So the first pipeline which was created was a pipeline template, which is um, uh, will be used for the pipeline channel um, generator to create the CloudFormation template. This one will fail, that's fine, because here the parameter for the stack name is not set correctly. This will be done once these pipelines will be generated. So the second pipeline which was created is the pipeline generator, which will actually create the CloudFormation pipelines based on your structure. And we have seen this one already run successfully. And this one has by now created one, two, three, four, five, six pipelines. Let's see in my repo, I have one, two, three, four, five, six folders with CloudFormation templates. So this looks quite good. 
So these are already in progress and yeah, we got already some succeeded. So let's switch to cloud formation. Each of these pipelines, of course, should by now deploy a template, a cloud formation template. This is the first. So looks quite nice. Um, what does actually this pipeline generator um, do is um, he will not only create these pipelines, he will also create for each um, folder um, in your repo uh, parameter here in parameter store. So once he runs the next time, he will find a parameter, he will not um, create a pipeline. And he will also delete pipelines um, if you delete a folder in your GitHub repo. So, um, for example, if I would delete this folder, we can test this here in a second, in my repo it will delete the pipeline and of course the parameter. It will not delete the stack, this is again by purpose, because deleting stacks should not be done automatically. You really want to confirm this in your, for example, in your QA or prod and only delete it um, for a special user which got the permissions to do so. Now let's test if the deletion of templates also works. So I will by now, let's say, it's a simple lambda, I will not delete for now, but I will rename the folder and then the prefix does not, uh, does not longer match with the script. So this would be the same effect as I would have deleted as a pipeline. So by now I can Push this to my repo. Pushed. And now we should see the pipeline generator in progress, right? If you remember the parameter when we deployed the stack, um, trigger generator pipeline and push. This is by now true. If you set this to force. Pipeline would not start automate automatically on your um, GitHub repo changes. You would have to trigger it, for example, here with a release change. I have set it to two. By now it's running and it will now no longer um, find the folder for um, 420. And this would mean he should actually clean up right the parameter and should now also clean up the pipeline for um, 420 and this is already done so the pipeline should be done in a second it's still in progress let's wait for a little bit a couple of seconds and the pipeline should be done and we have seen not only the creation of pipelines is um, working also the deletion of pipelines once you have removed a pipeline a uh, template stack in your repo you can also simulate if we add a new um, folder to our cloud formation repo. Um, so basically what I have to do is just rename this folder again to the prefix where it's going to be recognized. Before I commit, I will delete the stack. As I have mentioned, deletion is not automated by purpose. So I'm going to now delete. Um, the lambda stack to be redeployed against once the pipeline generator have created again the 4, 420 folder. So by now let's commit our changes. So the folder 420 is back with convention. Our pipeline was triggered by our push. Our pipeline will by now find again the folder. So it's by now named in the correct naming convention. And by now we should see first the parameter should be added in a second here. And then the pipeline should be generated. Still in progress.
So, parameter there. And by now also the pipeline. So, works quite good. We can see the lambda was deployed again. So, perfect. Um, one note on the deployment, C pipeline is set up in a single account scenario. So, um, in general it's possible to do a pipeline like this for a multi-account setup where you would be able to, to deploy from a toolchain account to a different dev, a different QA and different protocol. To keep this simple and the example simple and not um, introduce too many cross-account roles, I have set up this as mentioned um, one account scenario. So if you have three accounts, uh, three straight stages like dev, um, QA and prod, you will have to install the pipeline generator in each of these accounts. And then for example, if you want to deploy the um, new file, simple file system in dev, go ahead, do this manually or update it manually and again do it uh, update or create in in prod manually. The first time it runs, if you set um, the uh, trick on pusher to uh, push um, on trigger to true, it will create the, the stacks automatically. So maybe it's a good practice to set this to false and also for the initial creation of the pipelines, do this only once you run the pipeline manually. I hope you enjoy this pipeline, have fun and you will find it useful in your project if you have for example <coughs> 40 or 50 cloud formation stacks which is not unusual in a project uh, i hope you will find it useful to not um, create these pipelines manually but have these pipeline generator so thanks for listening and see you in the next video